For the longest time, Hong Kong has been a place where unique and old ships go to seek refuge from the scrapyards of Bangladesh and India. This is not because there is some company there trying to buy them all out. Well, it kind of is. Basically, it's because of the gambling ship market, a market that is still lucrative in Hong Kong, however, has twainted in the last couple of years. I remember seeing a lot of these ships, and then overnight, they disappeared. Ships such as, for example, the first ever Royal Caribbean ship, or one of the first at least. I also remember loving a lot of these ships because as opposed to the boxes of today, these ships had sleek lines and were very, very classic. However, one ship I used to see there that I now do not, and that I have no idea where it went at the time of leaving Hong Kong, was the China Star, or the Sapayan Star, or whatever it's called now. This is because it was huge, always docked in the main harbor, and was a catamaran cruise ship, a design I'd never seen in all my years of looking for another catamaran cruise ship. I later figured out this is because this was the only ever catamaran cruise ship built, and its story is truly unique. When you see a crazy concept like this, originally you think this was probably some sort of big cancelled project, kinda reminds you of that freedom ship thing, and all the ads that came out for that that never happened, but no, this actually did happen. The ship was built in 1991 for a new company called Diamond Cruise. Not Diamond Cruises, just Diamond Cruise. This was made of a conglomerate of Finnish banks, as well as the Radisson Hotels Group, giving it the name Radisson Diamond. The ship was built as what was called a swath design. This is kind of like an oil rig in a way, where large structures extend to the bottom which connect to pontoons. This was so that it could displace more water, because it would take a lot of displacement to hold up the heavy mass that was this giant cruise ship. Many design cues had to also be taken in order to save weight and so that the small hull could keep up all the weight of this giant cruise ship. She began cruises in 1992 for Diamond Cruise, however her catamaran design came with some drawbacks. Notably, the fact they couldn't stuff as many cabins into the ship as possible, so she could only carry just over 300 people, which may seem a lot to you, but to cruise lines is barely enough. Either way though, her distinctive catamaran design did also come with some benefits, like for example, people loved the whole design, and she even had a hydraulically operated marina in the back. I don't see a lot of cruise ships doing this, it's kind of like that little platform at the back of a lot of private yachts, but on a giant cruise ship. Because of the catamaran design as well, people speculate that she could not carry that big of an engine, which is why she could only go 14 knots. In comparison, most cruise ships and even most ferries go 20 knots. This ship was incredibly slow. but. Her distinctive design and the amount of entertainment that was stuffed on board this ship made up for it. In 1992, eventually Diamond Cruises finally changed their name to Radisson Seven Seas Cruises, eventually to Regent Seven Seas Cruises. The 90s were the highlight of her career, and I recommend watching any videos from the time, especially the first one that comes up on YouTube which is an ad for the ship. It'll really help you get a feel of what it was like on board, and why I'm very jealous that I was never able to sail on this despite seeing her multiple times. There's even a video which you can see here of people literally going under the ship due to her amazing design. Well, I say amazing, but I just really like it. I think it's unique, and although she wasn't meant to look beautiful, I think her catamaran design actually was a positive overall, just because it made her so distinctive and so unique looking. And, of course, it was able to host that marina, which I'm very jealous that modern cruise ships don't have. However, all good things come to an end, and eventually Regent Seven Seas sold her to new owners. This was Treasure Ocean Limited, who brought her to Piraeus and renamed her Omar Star. However, she was later sold again to another luxury cruise line based in Hong Kong and renamed Asia Star. 
she finally commenced operations as a casino ship. She was quite popular and made quite a bit of money, but you know what makes more money? Selling the ship. She was purchased by China Cruise Company Limited and was sold again to the CEO of CCCL. Another $20 million was respent refurbishing her and she was renamed the China Star. The original idea was to basically return the ship to its original livery, but no, it ended up going with this ugly looking shady yellow. Or gold, whatever it is. Either way, this is when I used to see it a lot. And I remember it quite vividly. I even remember that in our school we had a little time lapse of Hong Kong when the computer was not used for a while and was kind of shutting down. It would show a time lapse of the skyline of Hong Kong. And that ship was always there, and it was always what I had my eyes fixated on. Of course I did. But either way, I never really saw her move much. I thought it was stationary and just a floating casino that didn't move. But, no, she did do cruises, I just didn't live around H Hong Kong Island, or at least not in the area she sailed nearby. However, this is unfortunately where things would turn around for the ship quite drastically. She was sold to United Investments Limited and renamed Sapayan Star, after which she was laid up at Zhujiang Ko Anchorage. Eventually, in 2022, she was laid up at Shandong. However, on September 21st, 2022, the ship was blown aground by severe winds near Hawaii Village in Shandong. The ship had been awaiting to dock at Shandong Heavy Industries for repairs and refit. This indicated that, very thankfully, there were no plans to scrap the ship, as she was about to go under a reported $40 million in refurbishment. This is where the story basically ends. I don't know where the ship is now, because sometimes I hear that the ship has been refloated and is in repairs, but I also see videos and images from only a couple months ago that see the ship in the same position. The good news is that she seems to be in a very shallow grounding, and also, when the tides go up, she is very easy to refloat. I never knew much about the ship before this video, and I never really knew much about it in Hong Kong. However, I'm so glad I learned about it. She's definitely now one of my favorite cruise ships, and I'm very sad that this is how it ended up. I really hope that she can be salvaged, and no matter where she sails, I hope she will have a bright career in the future. I also hope that somehow someone in this video knows the current situation of the ship. So, if you do, please comment it down below. I'm kind of worried about this ship, and I really want it to return to service, of course. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, and Zoigin. We go in sail.